Hello, my name is Neve Brennan. I'm the archivist with Donegal County Council Archive Service. Today I'm going to talk to you about Donegal and the first dial. After the 1916 Rising and the execution of many of the Rising's leaders, Sinn Féin and the Volunteers' popularity grew in Ireland. However, Unionists continued to oppose Home Rule. On the 11th of November 1918, after four long years, the First World War finally ended. From September to December of that year, campaigning began in earnest for a general election. In December, the general election was held in Ireland, the first since 1910, but this one was by far a more democratic election. These are documents from the county archives relating to the 1918 general election. Preparing for it. So who could vote in 1918? Under the Representation of the People Act of that year, men over 21 could now vote for the first time. Women, for the first time, were allowed to vote in a general election if they were aged over 30 and owned property. So overnight, the numbers who could vote in Ireland increased from 700,000 to over 2 million voters, which is more than double. This is a document from the archives, a booklet explaining who was entitled to vote now in 1918. It's entitled The New Franchises and the New Registration and Electoral Methods. This is a page within that document. It outlines who could vote in parliamentary elections, in, in local government elections, and, and, and which women could vote. This is a document relating to the 1918 election about polling stations, listing some of the polling stations that people are allowed to vote in. Do you know which polling station your parents vote in? This is a large poster relating to the 1918 general election and where people should vote. These documents are all held in the county archives. So the general election took place on the 14th of December. It was an overwhelming victory for Sinn Féin, who won 73 seats, and the Unionists in the northeast of the country also did well at 26, whereas the old Irish Parliamentary Party, who had been so popular until recent years, the Home Rule Party, only won six. Four seats were won in Donegal, Joseph Sweeney, Peter Ward, Joseph O'Doherty and Edward Kelly. Sinn Féin decided to set up a separate parliament in Ireland. The election was also notable for the first woman ever to be elected to a British Parliament, and this was Countess Markievicz. So who were the four men from County Donegal who won seats in the 1918 general election? What do we know about them? Well, there was Edward Joseph Kelly, and he was born in Ballyshannon in 1883. He was first elected as a Member of Parliament, or MP, in 1910 for East Donegal. In 1918, he won again for the Irish Parliamentary Party, or Home Rule Party, and he obtained 7,500 votes. He decided to stay as an MP at the British House of Commons and continue to represent Ireland from there. He was the only one of the four men from Donegal to do that. He retired from politics in 1922 as the new Irish Free State began. Joseph O'Doherty was from a nationalist dairy family. He became a teacher and barrister. He was heavily involved in politics and from a young age, he helped plan the 1916 Rising and set up Sinn Féin and the Volunteers in Donegal. He spent time in prison after the Rising. In 1918, he was elected to the constituency of North Donegal for Sinn Féin. He defeated the Irish Parliamentary Party candidate and he was re-elected to the second Dáil two years later, or three years later. O'Doherty opposed the Anglo-Irish Treaty that ended the War of Independence. He was passionately against partition and spoke about it in the Dáil. He served as a TD in the Third and Fourth Dáils from 23 to 1927, and he was a founder member of Fianna Fáil in 1926. He also served as a TD from 1933 to 37, so he had a long political career. Joseph Aloysius Sweeney is probably the most well-known of the four. He was born in 1897 and uh, was from Burtonport in West Donegal. 
He was educated at St. Eunan's College in Letterkenny, which I'm sure you've all heard of, and in St. Enda's, Patrick Pierce's school in Dublin, which I'm sure you've all heard of as well. He was a member of the Secret IRB and the Volunteers, and he fought in the GPO on Easter week with Pierce, and he spent time in prison as a result. He was a founding member of the Dunlow branch of Sinn Féin and the Volunteers there. He was elected in the general election in 1918 for West Donegal for Sinn Féin, and he was the youngest TD to sit in the first Dáil. He became an officer commanding in the, IR, in the IRA in the War of Independence. His branch, the West Donegal, was the most active in the county. He voted for the Anglo-Irish Treaty at the end of the War of Independence and became Commandant General in charge of the Free State Army. After the war, he was appointed Chief of Staff of the Irish Army in the Irish Free State, or Slair Stath Aaron's first government. He had a long career as well. Peter Ward was a solicitor in Donegal Town. He was elected in the 1918 general election and one of the 27 who attended the first meeting. He was an officer commanding of the 4th Brigade, South Donegal, and active during the War of Independence. He was arrested in 1920 and jailed and re-elected in 1921 and set in the 2nd Dáil. He was very active in local politics, being a member of the Donegal County Council and chairperson during the War of Independence years. He reluctantly supported the Anglo-Irish Treaty and was re-elected at the 1923 general election for the new Common Gael, which was later to become Fianna Gael, in the, in the Free State, the new Free State. He resigned his seat in, in August 1924. So after the general election, preparations took place for the first meeting of the First Dáil. It was decided to meet on the 21st of January 1919 in the Mansion House in Dublin. This First Dáil was not accepted by the British as the new Irish Parliament. This was an illegal gathering according to the British. And these are, this is a photo of crowds gathering outside the Mansion House on the morning of that first uh, session. This is the Mansion House today. It is the seat of the Lord Mayor of Dublin today. This is a photograph of the first Dáil's meeting on the 21st of January. There were only 27 TDs in attendance that day. Three of them are from Donegal. O'Doherty is seated in the front row, first on the left. Sweeney stands right behind him. Ward is standing also, second row, third from the right. See if you can spot them. So these three Donegal men had decided not to become members of parliament or MPs in the House of Commons, unlike Edward Kelly. They attended the first Dáil as members of the first Dáil or Chapter Dáil. Thousands gathered, as we said that morning, outside the Mansion House, and Unionist MPs did not attend. They were listed as being Aslaher or absent. The first Dáil created a cabinet or, cabinet or government. Colin Brewer became the temporary president because de Valera was in jail in the UK. The first woman to be elected was Countess Tamarkiewicz. She was absent also because she was in prison in Holloway Prison in the UK. 34 Sinn Féin TDs were absent. They were described as being Fay Gloss and Yalov, imprisoned by foreigners. Michael Collins was absent too. He was in England planning de Valera's escape from jail. The first Dáil issued a Declaration of Independence, ratifying the 1916 proclamation. We ordain that the elected representatives of the Irish people alone have power to make laws binding on the people of Ireland. That's how it started. There was also a message to the free nations of the world, stating that Ireland had proclaimed her national independence and calling upon every free nation to support the Irish Republic by recognising Ireland's national status. There was a de democratic programme issued that the country was to be ruled in accordance with the principles of liberty, equality and justice for all. On the same day, the first shots in the War of Independence took place in Tipperary. Two policemen were shot. First of all, I did not know this was going to happen. But the War of Independence took off gradually after that. 
The volunteers started to train even more, so even more, even harder. They raided for arms. They disrupted communications, cut wires and rail lines. The Royal Irish Constabulary or police force looked to arrest people, such as the new TD O'Doherty, and they raided people's houses and looked for arms. Sinn Féin held rallies in Donegal as well as across the country, including with Ward and with an escaped prisoner, Sean Milroy. The second meeting of the Dáil took place in April 1919 and De Valera and Collins are both there. You can see Collins there seated at the bottom with the second on the left. And De Valera is there in the middle. And Arthur Griffith and other famous politicians of the time were able to attend in April because a lot of them had been released from jail at that stage. But more of them were going back to jail fairly soon. So the War of Indep- uh, Independence, uh, during the War of Independence, Sinn Féin set up their own court system called the Dáil Courts, which settled many D- disputes. The Dole Court cases were held and temporary prisons were located. Raids and attack on railway lines, roads, post offices, barracks took place and the RIC in particular was a target. These are three people photographed here who were heavily involved in the War of Independence in Donegal. You have Joseph Murray from South Donegal on the left, Edna Coyle in the middle there and uh, Pat, uh, Common Aban and Padre O'Donnell there on the right, rest of Donegal. The flying columns of 1920-1921, Donegal was divided into the 1st Northern Division and four brigades, West, Southwest, Southeast and Northeast. West Brigade was the most active under new TD Joseph Sweeney, also the, what was known as the flying column under Padre O'Donnell. There was a a local election for um, Donegal County Council and other local authorities in 1920, and this was another victory for Sinn Féin. The local authorities then made resolutions swearing their allegiance or support of the new Dáil Éireann. Local authorities abandoned the British government, local government board, to support Michael Collins' government and the Dáil. Donegal County Council, as you'll see here from a newspaper report, supported uh, the new Dáil Éireann in June the 26th, 1920. This is a newspaper account of that. This was under Peter Ward, who was chairman at that point. This is a bulletin issued during the war by the IRA. Summary 1920-1921, war and reprisals con- increased and the notorious Black and Tans arrived to wreak further havoc. The Partition Bill, or the Government of Ireland Act, created Northern Ireland in 1921. The Dáil did not recognise partition. War continued till July 1921, and then there was a truce. Another general election was held, and Sinn Féin were again successful. And the Unionists were successful in their election. The Anglo-Irish Treaty was signed by a British and Irish delegation in December 1921. Sweeney and Ward backed our support to the Anglo-Irish Treaty that ended the War of Independence. Many TDs and volunteers opposed it. The country was split. O'Doherty opposed the treaty. But the treaty was approved by the Dáil by a short number of votes, 64 to 57, in January 1922. The Irish Free State came into being in December of that year, but by then the Civil War was active. And it was a very bitter civil war, though it only lasted about 10 months. It ended in May 1923 many deaths and injuries on both sides. The Joseph Murray collection is available online at Donegal County Council Archives website. We have issued a little booklet called Donegal, the 1918 General Election and the First Doll in English and in Irish, and it's available online, also on the Donegal County Council Archives website. You can find out more about the decade of centenaries, including the First World War, the War of Independence, Partition, the Civil War, and Social and Economic Life in County Donegal by looking at these two packs, Donegal in 1916 and A Decade of Change. Both of these are available to view on our archives website. Thank you to the National Library and the Capturation Archive for use of the photographs of the first Dáil meeting. The remainder of the archives used for this presentation are from the Donegal County Archives collection. Thank you for watching and listening today. Have a nice day.